Everybody ready. Uh, Manny? Yes. Tom? Yes. Yep. Nick? Peter? Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us tonight. This is the June 8th meeting of the East Fishfield Town Board. This is a workshop meeting where the town board assembles to discuss matters of importance uh, regarding the town. Um, tonight, the, the town attorney has uh, called me at the last minute and, and told me that he had a conflict he could not attend, so we'll, we will be having the meeting without the town attorney this evening. Would you please arise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great. Thank you. Uh, only one thing really to, dis to uh, announce tonight, a uh, very exciting day. I would like to just say that today we had the kickoff meeting with the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers uh, for the Hope Opposition Superfund Water uh, Project. Um, we met in this room this morning with the contractors, with the uh, EPA, and with the Army Corps of Engineers. They went out on a trip to take a look at the site. So if you saw people out on the site, um, very exciting. Scott, with the next step, this is be actually like a pre-construction meeting or pre-bid meeting, a I pre -bid guess. Pre-bid meeting. The bids are due actually June 30th. Okay. I'm not quite sure how long they're going to take to review the bids or the proposals, I should say. Okay. And it's interesting to note that it's not based strictly on low bid. Um, they're going to go based on an experience, expertise, and a combination of, of low bids. So really? that's how the federal government does it. Wow, that's very good. That's very good. And the uh, Army Corps, I should say. The Army Corps, and the Army Corps actually works off of a short list of their own. Pre-approved contractors. Pre-approved contractors. The, the, yeah. the nation, I think. Yeah. yeah, so I think hopefully we'll be seeing a shovel in the ground sometime around September, October. That's what period. they're looking for, yeah. Yeah, so it's very exciting. Uh, Things are going very good, and, and they're very confident that the, the funding is in place. So that was very good, good news today. All right, with that, I'm going to open up tonight's work session, the workshop. Uh, no need for a vote. So the work session is now open. Uh, one thing I did want to mention to the board and to the public, um, unfortunately, um, we did some refinancing. We had, we, we had authorized refinancing of some of our bonds um, when, when uh, I guess when, when uh, I guess you call it tranche or when, when bunch of bonds for, for a better word, uh, some bonds last year, and then we reauthorized another, another series of bonds to be um, refinanced a couple, a couple weeks ago at our last voting meeting. Um, and what to do refinance typically includes uh, Moody's uh, rate, uh, a phone call with the Moody's rating company. Uh, Moody's does rating of ours, they, they rate our bonds, they, they, they rate our credit worthiness, if you will. So uh, we have typically, this is about an hour, media, uh, hour uh, conference call. They ask all kinds of questions, and um, it, it's a pre usually a pretty, pretty thorough conference call, pretty difficult. Uh, the first question they always ask, or one of the first couple, is always, it used to be always about IBM, how's IBM, your largest employer, how's, how's any downsizing going to affect your town, your tax base, da 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 da, da. Now it's Global Foundries, and the question this, this time around was, oh, Global Foundries just had a layoff last month. How is that affecting the town? Um, you know, the response was, well, it was 24 people um, out of 2,800 left on the site. But um, so it was a pretty, pretty intense conference call, as they normally are. Um, unfortunately, um, the ne a couple of days later, we got the news that Moody's was going to downgrade us a notch. Um, we talked a lot about our plans going forward. The subdivision on the Global Foundry site um, really didn't seem to, to, to phase them at all. And we talked about going forward, how things were going. We're not going to have just one um, industry in the town being semiconductors. We're trying, working to diversify and everything. So to be quite honest with you, it was very, uh, very disappointed that Moody's uh, downgraded us to an A1 rating. Um, it's still credit worthy, investment grade is not a bad rating, but the fact that they did that, um, it's a little bit, 
a little bit troubling, especially as hard as we've been working. And one reason, one other point I'd like to make is, you know, you see at our town board meetings where we talk about uh, the Route 52 corridor sewer district, Route 52 water district, um, the subdivision that's been through the planning board and has been approved, was approved on October 4th of last year. So knowing how hard we're working on these in a very complicated subdivision project, you know, that, that Moody's really didn't take that into account. It was a little bit disappointing. Um, and Mark, if you just speak a little bit to what Moody's looks for in, in the financial trends, um, and then we'll, we'll talk about the, uh, the bond the refinancing, how that went. Yeah, other, so they look at the economic environment um, that Supervisor was referring to, and they well, also... And, and let me just say this before I get too far. I just want the town board and the public to know we're very financially strong. I disagree with Moody's rating, and, and you know, I know they base it on that, but I just want everybody to know we're very financially strong. So just want to make that very clear. So thank you, Mark. Yeah, and A1 is a good rating. Yeah. It's not as good as what we had. Uh, they also, just to note, removed the negative outlook. So it was a little bit good news, bad news. Um, but the number one financial um, uh, metric that they were looking at is, is the drawdown of fund balance over time. So going back to about 2012, we had uh, expenditures that exceeded revenues, so that draws down fund balance again in 2013 and 14. We were keeping expenditures roughly stable, but we had lost revenues um, from the 2000s. Um, and so we were uh, drawing down fund balance. We had had a very healthy fund balance at the time. And Mark, um, at one point I would, li one, I would like to point out in 2012, there's a change in the bookkeeping to how you book fund balance. There, you, yeah, they classify, uh, the way they classify fund balance is changed right um and it excluded about a million and a half dollars that was previously booked as fund balance was suddenly taken out of the fund balance right through through changes new york state uh mandated changes in bookkeeping correct largely yes Federal, yeah. fair f fair enough point yep um wait i'm sorry to interrupt but what we used to, what they, was the million dollars they used they used to count uh encumbered recreation development funds used to be counted in fund balance and then I think in 2012, they said you couldn't count that in fund balance anymore. Yeah, in 2013, uh, we moved, uh, we reclassified the way rec development monies. To me, it's actually a better representation of how it should be, but we were getting credit for those monies, and then no, we're not. No, sure, right. then we're not. So yes. when you look at the trend of fund so balance pre-2012 pre and post-2012, you say, wow, but if you realize there's a bookkeeping change. Yes. Right. So in one year, we had a million and a it half It makes it look change. like a million right. and a half dollar like change, right? Okay. Yes. Um, and again, I don't disagree with the change, but it, it has an appearance that isn't necessarily reflective. Because even when I remember what we used the fund balance for, for our budgets, it had to have been less than 1% of our total budget on years. We used less than 200,000 some years. The amounts that we were yeah. using? Yeah, yeah. And, but we had some years where we were using more. And it was the trend of, you know, that what they're looking at is trending. I trending and yeah. there was a, a negative trend there. In 2015, we actually had a surplus. So that's a positive. We increased our fund balance by about 500,000. We increased our cash um, holdings and our cash reserves. So that was a positive. But they were putting more weight on that trend rather than the the upturn. The upturn. Yeah. And, and last year, the fund balance we closed out the books in '15. The fund balance was, what was it, Mark? One million seven hundred and seventy-two thousand. In general fund, it was uh, one million seven hundred seventy-two thousand. So that was even a slight increase over 2015. Um, they're discounting 16 some because our audit hasn't been finished yet. You know. They take our numbers, but they prefer to have independently presented numbers. And our audit will be done in a couple weeks, but it's not done now. Um, 2017 is looking very good so far. I expect that we will have um, surpluses um, that would increase fund balance further, increase cash holdings further. But again, they're giving very little weight to projections for 2017. Um, so I think that though they are, that's why they removed the negative outlook. They've seen a change. I think they believe that the change will continue and they mention as long as that change does happen that will be upgraded. But the downgrade was, you know, reflective of the reality of uh, 
expenditures that exceeded surpluses for a number of years and drew down fund balance. So. And that was really, as Mark said, we, you know, we kept expenditures. We, we did, I, I think we've seen our charts a million times, you know, with our revenue expenses charts and uh, the revenues have been difficult. They seem to be turning around now also. Yep. So everything is really looking very positive. Uh, an A1 rating is not a bad rating. I never like to be downgraded by Moody's. And, uh, you know, we could have kept our rating very high had we done the things like slash budgets, um, you know, uh, recreation budgets, police budgets, highway budgets, but we didn't slash them because to be honest with you, we work for the people of the town of East Fishkill. We don't work for Moody's. So while Moody's would like us to have, you know, three or $4 million in the bank, um, we still provided all those services that we've always provided and uh, are still building our fund balance back up. So I think that it was, uh, like I said, a little bit unhappy that, uh, they, that they downgraded us, but I just want to assure everybody that, you know, we're very solid financially uh, with the almost uh, $1.8 million in the bank at the end of last year. Um, and the and trend is going very well, very good budget this year, looking for a very good budget next year. And I, I th I'm very, very positive. So just want to let everybody know if you saw it in the papers, you saw it on the website, we're very, very solid financially. And Mark, today we had the, the um, refinance of all those bonds that yes. we, uh, right. we, that we want to refinance. How did the market go? Very well. Very well, so correct? So the whole reason we get the Moody's rating is to... Uh, well, when we go to borrow money in the bond market, go to market we want to get the, the rating, best yeah. rate possible. And so this afternoon we got the results and they were better than we expected when we were AA3. Very so, good, right. um, a very good rate. We got uh, under, under 3%. And we expect um, savings over the life of these bonds to be in excess of 2.9 million. Uh, so almost three million. And yeah. how long is the uh, life of the bond? 20 years. Well, it's a variety of terms. Um, That's right. So it's it's all of them bundled together. Some are another three years. Some are another 27 years. You know. Um, but this is going to show us a average savings about $125,000 a year. The next 20 years in, in finance charges. To That's why. It was, that's why it's very important to do the refinance. It's going to save us that, and just the refinancing is going to save us that kind of that money. So this is a very good thing. Yes. Mark, uh, yes. do we have uh, the rating from uh, Moody? Is it yearly, twice a year? Well, so two things can trigger um, a rating. One is if we go to borrow above a certain amount, and it hasn't been it has been more than a year since we had our last one. They'll do a, a review. And then they also initiate them from time to time based on their own initiative. So uh, they have a set of analysts that are actually looking out at their clients, um, looking out at towns and uh, various governments. And if they see anything in the news that might um, uh, warrant them to initiate a rating change on their own, they'll, do a re they'll initiate the review. In this case, we initiate the review because we're going to the bond market. Yeah. So if and when our economy gets better for the town, uh, can you request a, another review and probably- I think on a yearly rate? basis, she said, correct? Well, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they initiate something early our, next year. Okay. Um, yeah, we asked we, them that question. The, I mean, the main reason we want a rating is because we're going out to the bond market. If we're not going to the bond market next year, I mean, even if we have improved, I don't know that we necessarily, I mean, we can always ask for it. Yeah. Um, but I would say if 2017 goes as expected, there's a chance we would get an upgrade. It may be that they want to see- Another year. Another, you know, yeah. more of a trend in the positive, but, you know. So once your rating improves, would that bond market reduce the cost of our bonds? or is Future that bonds. Locked? No, any future. Yeah. These are all locked in. They're These are locked all in. Fixed. You can't change those for okay. the, what we just did. But to be honest with you, you're not going to be able to beat uh, that rate. We're not going to no. beat this rate. Okay. We could we could be AAA next year. It's unlikely that the market itself would would be this positive. I mean, yeah. again, you don't know. But this was a very good. This was a very very good for refinance. Us. So we're very happy with the outcome. And to be honest with you, it seems like the bond market isn't as concerned as Moody's was when they looked at our at our financials. So. I think that was very good. Yeah, because they have to review our financials to issue the bonds, right? Yeah, and they're, well, they're relying a lot on, on Moody's, but again, an A1 rating is very good. It, it feels bad because we had such an excellent rating and this is very good, but 
Um, so the difference between A1 and A, A3, in reality, you know, in terms of a, a percentage, uh, interest rate isn't that great. So, um. actually, it's very good news today, and this will, and this will, this is good news for budgets going in, way into the future. So, so very good. And thank you to Beth Ferguson and Capital Markets. Our oh, she's bond advisors did a great job. Yeah, so. yeah, they are the people that handle all of our bonds, and they do a great job. So. Any questions on it? I was not happy with the uh, rating change, but we were very happy today with the uh, results from the bond market itself. So, well, if it goes according to plan, they'll be looking at us again next year anyway. <coughs> it's, it's, it's possible it's because of uh, if we borrow. Homes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they asked. Possibly. They said, do you see any, any uh, borrowing in the, in the future? And we talked about Worley Homes was brought up. Depending on the amount we're going to borrow. Oh, in the, yeah. 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 Uh, we'll see what happens. All right. And that's, just, uh, again, I just want to say we're downgraded to an <coughs> A1, or A1, but um, we're very solid financially. And uh, we had a very good day in the bond market. <coughs> so that was, that was very good. All right, and that being said, next thing I did want to discuss, uh, Hillside Lake Dissolution Plan, um, because there had been a vote taken to dissolve the district, and we were going to have a, a discussion on the plan. I'd just like to give a short chronology of Hillside Lake for, I don't know if everybody in the, in the uh, watching is familiar with it. But uh, in the 1930s, the dam was built to form Hillside Lake. At that time, subdivision maps were filed for this residential development. Property owners were deeded rights to use Hillside Lake as it was a private lake. In the 1990s, the homeowners petitioned the town to form a special park district to perform certain maintenance duties and come up with a plan to rehabilitate the lake. The old clubhouse was removed. The town began certain maintenance <coughs> duties and studies were done on the lake. Now, when I took office in 2006, the town engineers told me they had a plan to rehabilitate the lake and wanted to apply for the needed permits. The cost of the project was to be $3 million to be paid by the district. But there was a problem finding a place to store the 90,000 plus shards of dredge material. So after reviewing the proposal, speaking to the dredge people, the DEC, I think we met with DEC on this Hillside Lake projects and various various uh, type projects uh, with DC probably three times uh, since 2006. And people familiar with the project, we also spoke with members of the Hillside Lake Board at the time, we decided to look for an engineering firm that specializes in that type of work. Um, thought, my thought was that, you know, maybe the town engineer who is doing all the different types of engineering, maybe this is something that is not really their specialty. So then uh, 2008, we, en we engaged Great Eastern Environmental to do a study. But the problem remained, where are we gonna store the dredge material? In 2010, I asked the person who treats our ponds who we could speak to about Hillside Lake. Uh, in 2010, after that, members of the town board and the Hillside Lake board met with a company from New Jersey that does that kind of work. At that meeting, it was agreed to use some of the money in the Hillside Lake Park District account to begin a pilot program to remove lily pads. We felt that we could see how much work we could do for a certain amount of funding and then budget that amount for a multi-year project. But the next day, I received a call from the board member, for the Hillside Lake board members who were present and told that they were, the board was not interested in the project. In 2010, we held a public hearing at Van Wyck Junior High School and presented three proposals with varying costs to the district, including making the lake smaller. None were, were, none were well received. In 2011, the town put out bids and en engaged the services of Renewage and a grant writer who, using the documents on hand and with help from our engineers, developed the project to rehabilitate the lake and to find funding. Over the years, we made something, oh, I think probably over 10 grant applications, uh, but they were all denied. Finally, in 2015, the town did receive an approval for $647,250 for a DEC grant to install a stormwater wetland filter that would include suction, discharge, and aeration devices in the lake area. This grant was mentioned in an application to New York State to request a further $128,000 to treat and remove lily pads. The lily pad, re uh, the lily pad removal grant successfully moved through several le levels of review. In September of 2016, bids were authorized for the stormwater treatment phase one of the project. On January 23rd, a petition was filed on behalf of the homeowners re requesting a vote to dissolve the special park district. 
Uh, bid documents were developed, permits were obtained for both projects, and on April 7th of this year, bids for phase one were put out with construction scheduled to begin on June 21st. On April 20th, an email was received from New York State on the lily pad removal project requesting documentation that the town owned the, the documentation that the town owned the property upon which the project was to be done prior to final review. The receipt of this email was announced at a town board meeting and a letter was sent notifying New York State of the petition and the pending vote. On May 23rd, the town clerk certified the results of the vote which was in favor of dissolution of the district and as per the contract, DC was notified of the vote. The project has tentatively been put on hold until the dissolution is complete, at which time DEC will be notified, as will the other New York State agency. So now the town board has a set period of time to create a dissolution plan. It appears by the dissolution vote that we have now come full circle. So now I'm just asking town board members for their, for their thoughts on a dissolution plan. I'd just like to open it up to the town board. And what are your thoughts, what, any ideas on a dissolution plan? So now I just want to give a little bit of a history. So open the, I'm opening up the uh, meeting. If anybody would like to speak. I'll Any start ideas? if nobody wants to. Sure. Um, as I've discussed with all of you, um, I'm in favor of the town taking over the, um, the park district. The, the people of Hillside Lake have spoken. Um, and I'd like to see us eventually work at a series of benchmarks on um, what we can do for the lake. Mm -hmm. But any amount of money that has to be spent in the future with the lake, I believe, should go before a referendum. Cleaning the lake, whatever, the, the, if the town is going to take it, then the people should vote on, on how we do that. But I think that that's going to be down the road. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I, th I think that would be only fair. Any money to be spent should be going to the but general it's, public. It's gonna, right, but right now I believe that um, I was taking it over. Okay. Uh, uh, other thoughts? Well, uh, that's fine if we take it over. Um, but like the councilman said, you know, we, we don't have the funding to fix the lake. Now, I don't see any reason for us to take the lake if we're not going to fix it. So I don't know why we would wait. I think that... Uh, we should put it on the ballot this year. Put it in November. Put it. We have a plan. Didn't you have a plan from years ago? You said. Oh when, yeah, we have plenty of plans. So sure. we could we could come up with something maybe similar to that. Come up with a dollar figure. Put it on the ballot. Have it voted on. It gets approved. Next year we start. Okay. I mean, I I, I, I think that with all due respect, I think that's a little premature. I think that we should give it a little well, bit of time before we put something of that magnitude on the ballot. I think people realize that um, it's going to cost a considerable amount of money to fix. Okay, but nobody is disputing that. No. But the people have to pay for it, the town has to pay for it. Uh, eventually, yes. Eventually, it, but, but what, what would we wait for? We've been waiting long enough. Mm. There's also, and I, I think everybody received a copy of the uh, petition. Did everybody receive a copy of the petition? There was also, uh, uh, included in the petition was a letter from the uh, bond council or, or from the uh, town's attorneys way back when uh, disclosing um, uh, restriction in the deeds, which also could be problematic um, because technically it, it, it restricted uh, transfer of the property without a full vote, uh, unanimous vote. So I think that's something we'd have to also discuss because you wouldn't want to, and the other thing too, and I'd have to agree with Councilman D'Alessandro, I mean, you would want to take it unfunded. I mean, if you just take the lake, then uh, if the town, and I think that would probably actually in itself, for, I think actually, and this is my opinion, I think that would actually require a referendum also. It, should, it wouldn't just go to the, tax, go to the general taxpayers. Um, that would be something that have to be done probably through a referendum, it would be transfer of property, transfer, of the property to the town. Now, now, as far as the dissolution, the lake is owned by the town on behalf of the lake, of the, of the homeowners uh, in, the smart, in the special park district. But, um, you know, if it was to go to the general taxpayer, I think that you'd have to 
have a referendum on that also, and then we transfer a property to the general town. Also, I think you want to be very careful, you know, because we, we can't spend taxpayers' money, general taxpayers' money, so we want to just be mindful of that, you know. So just a couple thoughts. What do you think? Complicated. Any, what do you think, Councilman Marinaro? I want to hear from Peter. I mean, he's the I think, senior. I think if you're the person on the board. Excuse me? You're oh. um, I would say if you're going to even consider taking it, which is what everybody seems to want to do, I wouldn't want to take it without a plan. And then you got to put it on referendum, say, hey, that estimate of $3 million was eight years ago? Seven years ago? Mm, no, it wasn't even that long ago. We had the one for Congressman Maloney was probably three, four years ago. Yeah. So it was about $3 million plan, I believe. That $3 million, I'm going to bet you, is $4 million by now, the prevailing wage. I mean, you've got to have an idea of what you want to do mm -hmm. um, and how you're going to get, if we do take it and we do clean that whole thing up, how it's going to benefit the town because mm -hmm. you need to be informed to vote. Yeah. And then how are you going to get all that traffic? You're going to have to have it out of there too because it's not just if we clean the lake up, it's pretty. Right. Now you got an extra 2,000 cars going in a weekend. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to have I mean, parking. You've got you to have parking. You gotta have, what's it really going to cost? Yeah. You can throw a number of $3 million on it. I don't know whether that's real. You're mm -hmm. going to sit there and you've got to have a, you gotta have a plan. You I just agree. can't say we're going to take it because mm -hmm. the day we take it, you're going to be in here every day saying, fix this. We well, don't have money fix to it. fix the roads, yeah. which we decided. We don't want to increase the taxes by $60 to fix the roads. And that was a million dollars a year. Now I need $3 million in one year, yeah. two years, whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, you've got to have a real plan. I understand. I All agree. I'm not saying that, but my thing is don't rush into We have to make a plan, but I, I just think that a vote is premature at this point until we have something tangible, yeah, a real plan to vote on. I, 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 think I don't know whether we quick. can legally push it off to mm -hmm. a vote for next year before we decide to take the lake. I don't have the attorney here mm -hmm. tonight to ask no. him. No, we have, well, we have to have this decision has to be made before we make a vote. I'm not voting to spend three and a half million dollars to fix a lake. No, no, no. You know, and, and I don't. It's not fair to the taxpayer, of the, the general taxpayer of the town of East Fishkill, that all of a sudden we should just vote and they would have to fix the lake. I mean, the general taxpayer of the town of East Fishkill would be the ones who would have to make that decision. Obviously, it wouldn't be us on this board. I mean, nobody wants to pay two and a half million dollars to fix Worley Homes. Same type of thing. They want to dissolve that district. And it's well, there you they're go. The ones they're going to pay for it. There you go. The Worley Homes, uh, talking about Worley Homes, uh, you know, we're going to form the district there if things work out to fix that water system. And those people in that district will be paying all the expenses because they'll be deriving all the benefit. That's what a special park, that's what a special I district know. is. So that's a good point. I mean, it's not a quick snap decision you can make overnight. No. I mean, you need legal advice. Mm -hmm. What can you legally do? What can you, I mean, that's, we all know what we want to do, but. Yeah. What can you legally do? Well, we still have the problem with the uh, deed restriction, you know, and that's kind of a that's kind of an issue. Um, I think something we'll have to take a look at. Obviously, I, I have spoken with the assessor about the uh, say the lake was to be just back to the homeowners. Um, the assessor, we we discussed the the value of the lake. Um, how it would be distrib distributed distributed amongst uh, the taxpayers on in the Hillside Lake uh, former park district in the uh, homeowner back to the homeowners and that wouldn't be a problem that's typical assessments um, things like that so I mean it could go back to the homeowners where it's possible it could you know become a general town project we'd have to take a look but a general town project will take a lot of funding and will have to be a benefit to the town. So we'll have to see about that one. <coughs> okay, anybody else have any thoughts? None? Okay. Just, you uh, don't? we've been discussing this uh, for maybe three years now. And uh, the same questions were asked three years ago. And we're still asking the same questions tonight. Is my phone on? Is my... Pull it closer. Okay. 
So the same questions I remember Mr. Cassidy saying exactly the same comments. The bottom line is that the district took a vote to dissolve the lake. Mm -hmm. Now we have six months to decide as a board. Still, the board, some board members are asking, what can we do with it? By now, three years later, we should have had an idea what do we want to do with this property. So the same questions are asked tonight that they were asked three years ago. We have spent hundreds of hours discussing plans with the community, uh, uh, now we're still asking the same questions. Uh, if and buts, it seems that if we do not have the town lawyer, we can't decide. It's a, it's a decision that the board has to make. Now, regardless where we're going with this, uh, there is other issues that have arisen. So there is legality issues like the town supervisor said before. Uh, can the board decide? I think that the state, the law states that we have six months to decide mm -hmm. what we want to do with the park district. We're still thinking what is the community, what is the rest of the community think? What should we do, what will we do? Two years ago we had this discussion. We we're supposed to put a plan in place. Nobody approached anybody and says, can we sit down and discuss a plan? Well, so this is the last minute of the last hour I was no. discussing. Do, do you okay. have a plan? I, you know. Um, uh, I'm just asking do if you, you do. Everybody's giving their opinion. Do you have we a plan? Had, we had discussions. Uh, yeah, but I'm asking if you, you have said, a plan. You said a meeting. It's not my plan. No, I'm, uh, I didn't say it yeah. was. It could be. I said, do you have a if plan? If you have one. It if could I be, town sure supervisor could. would be my plan. I'm not a town supervisor. Okay. It's not my plan. Okay. But if you remember two years ago when we yes. sat in this room, and Bobby Grasso was sitting right behind me. I was looking this way, and we met with the Hillside Lake Board. And they came up with, we'd like to possibly do this or this or this. Correct. And then it was agreed upon that they were going to meet with somebody from REC mm -hmm. and somebody from the engineering office. True. Do you want to track back to that meeting? Did they ever follow through with the meeting on their thing? Don't just keep pointing it at us that yeah. we didn't develop a plan. Yeah, I'm not, I don't own the lake yet. I'm not. I'm and not. I'm not so at, sure and that. You may not. I'm not pointing. I'm not at. so sure. I want to own it. If you want to give me the lake and say, Pete, you can leave it like that for eternity, then I'll probably consider seriously taking it because it doesn't cost the rest of you the know, people in the town three or four million dollars to fix it. If I may, just to say, it seems like. It's my decision against the rest of the board. No, to it's we're asking your opinion. So, but, but Everybody's Peter, got to decide Peter, where you want to spend Peter, the money. You're a town board member of the town of East Fishkill. I think it is, you were invited to some of the meetings. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't never remember you asking me a question, Manny, what is, what is the plan? What do they want to do? Well, okay, we, we spoke at these meetings. We're talking tonight. Yep. Then we're going to go away. And now we have a time constraint, and I guess we well, have got to a come big back time and decide. Constraint. I agree with you 100%. Okay? But it's been three years, and we, the board, I mean, some of these board members, maybe some more than others, have attended some of these meetings. I, I think that we have an obligation to decide where we want to go with this. Okay? Yep. Whether or not we send them to go see a psychiatrist, a doctor, uh, whatever board you want to send them to, to ask for, the, for their blessing, it is all up to us to decide what we want to do with this park district. And I'm not taking no parts. So you have no opinion? I, I don't want to say that we should or we shouldn't. I'm in agreeing or against. This is a discussion that we have. I'll agree with him then. I'll, I'll do the same as him. I don't want to Okay, agree. nobody wants an opinion here. But, but, okay. but, but what I'm saying tonight is that we've been having the same discussion. And we're looking like politicians discussing, 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 but not producing. So we're not producing. Where are the results? So well, what is what is it you're telling me we should definitely we should take the lake? Well, I'm not but telling we, you. No, 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 no,
we're not even going to think of spending the $3 million, if that's the number, or we're going to take the lake, we're going to spend the $3 million. Those are the two options if we take the lake. Third option is we don't want it, it's yours back. Those are the three options, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So that's what I we got to weigh out. And if we're going to take it and spend $3 million, you got to remember when we built that sewer plant, that's one number. Now I got to maintain that sewer plant. I got to keep it open. I mean, mm -hmm. it's what's the real number? And Eight. what can we really get? What can we do it for that makes everybody happy? Not everybody's going to be happy, no matter which decision we make. Peter, I am not going to go back in history, okay? But this board over here has got to stay on track, okay? We have to stay focused. Yeah. Okay, we have, a, we have a problem, and we're not dealing with the problem. I remember two years ago, Here this board wanted to acquire private property on Lake Wilton Road and spend almost a million dollars of taxpayers' dollars. And I remember some board members, when? John, you were oh, you're you're talking night? about the uh, Lake Wilton project that Dutchess County wanted to partner with Correct. us on that? Oh, right. Okay. Okay. So we wanted to buy that property, and the discussion was what can we do with it, and where's the money going to come from? Okay? Mm -hmm. So regardless, this is a board that wanted to buy that property. That's not true. We, we that is not true. You that is not that. true. The we county asked us on it. if we would consider it, and we brought it because to the workshop. Because everybody voted no on that. We brought well, it we to a workshop a for discussion. We didn't even take a vote. Councilman, don't put words on our mouths. I'm not the putting county, words. The All county against wanted that. to partner All with us. This is our due I'm diligence that words. night. Yes, I'm you are. I'm not putting words, yes, you but, are. but I remember I was the last person to speak that night. It seems somebody is so defensive. Because so, you're putting words in our mouth. Yeah, we don't I like that. i give you a rabies shot. One of these guys that you're going <laughs> to Councilman, <laughs> Councilman. I mean, Councilman, move on the other side. Councilman, you are putting words in people's mouths, so please stay to the point. Well, I'm not putting words in people's mouths. Yes, you are. Okay. But that like night, that. When, I, when you presented a project, the question was, where is the money going to come from? Mm -hmm. And some members said, we could use this money over here. What I'm saying, that three years, we have not decided, or we have not, at least until tonight, still asking the same question, where is the money going to come from? Or what do we want to do with this, if in case? Okay. So you know what? My opinion is it's a waste of time okay. talking about this anymore. Very good. No opinion. Thank you. All right. Very good. I, I think Peter sums it up pretty well in that there really are only a couple issues here, only a couple different options here. Um, basically go back to the homeowners or I would think goes on a referendum in November or this November would, if we did it this November it would be within the time frame. but I'm sure if we had a plan that was approved, um, it would go in, we could actually approve it for the following year if we needed more time to do a plan. Um, but either way, that's really, I, th I think the biggest uh, most potential that would be if it went back in front of the prop in front of the town the uh, taxpayers of the town as a whole with the plan but then again we have the issue with the uh, the legal issue with the transfer of the deeds so I'm not sure I mean obviously you could just go back to the homeowners the way it was uh, so I said we actually sort of came full circle they voted for a special park district we did what we did we put a lot of work into it and I know councilman said we didn't have a plan but up till not too long ago, we were planning on doing the filter system, the aeration, and removing lily pads, which seems to me to be a first step. And actually, we did, we were kind of close to actually beginning that project. Um, so I think, you know, we only have a couple options here. And I do believe that that would be either goes back to the homeowners or it would, you know, be put on a ballot for the uh, tax to town taxpayer as I a whole. Have, have a but we have to look into the issue with the, uh, with the deed restriction. I, I have an hypothetical question to throw to the board since we're discussing this community and the town engineer. And if this property decides to go back to the homeowners, what about if these guys decide to cut all the drainage that goes into the lake and build a concrete wall at those, <laughs> at those uh, sections, Scott, what would that happen? Well, you'd have different results in different areas based on the topography. You could have localized flooding, and me really in no case would have bypassed the lake, so I anticipate you'd have localized flooding. And at some point that water would rise to a point and make its way to the lake anyway. The lake's at the low point of the watershed. Okay, just asking. Okay. 
it would be kind of a mess for the road system, that's for sure. I also well, roads, it, becomes, it could be yards, it could yeah. be, you know, all kinds and of things. And if it becomes their property, they could do whatever they want. Well, I, I do, we do have riparian rights. You need an easement, you need an easement to... No, we've got riparian rights, so... You, if you have an easement, you could drain water from private property to private property. If this turns to be private property, then what do we do with those drainage? Well, again, I think as the supervisor said, and we've dealt with this in other instances in the town, there are repairing rights. I'm not the attorney, but there are certain rights for water. How long that has those, those drains have been there for? Had, of course, for, you know, established 50, 60 time, years so. that we know of. I won't say that's how it'll play out, but I know there is, we would look at that definitely. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if we do have rights, so. But on, but on the same token, if you do that, I don't know what's going to feed the lake. You know, if you cut that source of water off, what feeds the lake? Yeah. Do you have a lake? Oh, they used to have a natural spring. They used to fill the lake at mm -hmm. one time. I, I don't know that there is or not, to be honest with you. It's buried underneath someplace. Mm. Oddly enough, we think the swimming area right. has a spring. But, but it's not, on the other side the of the earth and dam. Well, because when we did the testing, we were getting, you know, bad results, I'll say, in the lake and good results or better results in the, in the swimming area. And we're, and we're thinking, how can that be? Because if the water flows from the main lake through the swimming area to off the site. But talking to some people and talking about the springs that are in that area, and that would dilute the water. You know, and that would, might be that would a make reasonable sense. explanation be, as yeah. to why those numbers came up contrary to what we thought they would have. So I don't know that the lake itself has many springs. I don't know. Okay. So anyway, so I have to give this some thought. We have six months to come up with a dissolution plan. And as Peter and I, I think, both agree that there's only a couple of options. So we'll have to uh, put these together and discuss it further. If anybody, obviously, the attorney not being here tonight, if anybody would like to meet with the attorney, I've, obviously he's available. Wednesdays is the best day. Stop in and chat with him. Ask many of these legal questions that we can't address tonight. Something else had come up, though, too, I know, Scott, we discussed um, as far as the stormwater discharges, um, I know that we're always getting complaints about muddy water coming into the lake. And, you know, even with Walter Artis was here the other day uh, at the last meeting, you know, we just had that big storm. And he talked about water. And I said to him, what happens, you know, in a big storm, the water does rush down side of the road and it takes sand and things like that. And, uh, you know, he does recognize that that happens. He doesn't think it's a... Um, I, I wouldn't say it's not a critical issue. I mean, it's something, it, it's kind of a, a, during a hard, a big storm, it's kind of difficult to address that kind of stuff. But Scott and I have been talking a little bit, and because the, the main element, the main uh, cause of uh, eutrophication in that lake is phosphorus. And that seems to be, I know Mr. Damaso gave us about a half hour lecture last meeting on phosphorus coming from, as the DEC, the uh, 303D listing states that the, the pollutant in Hillside Lake is phosphorus and it says the suspected source being septics. Uh, Mr. Damaso did give us a lesson on, on phosphorus in its natural elements. And uh, so we've been discussing this and um, to be quite honest with you, if you want to look at phosphorus reduction, it's really not our stormwater system that's causing this. Our stormwater system may be transporting it, but it's not causing it. And there's really one other place in town where um, the, the city, the uh, water uh, from that watershed area goes into the New York City reservoir system. And uh, it's called the East of Hudson area. And actually, phosphorus reduction is a very big part of the regulations that have been implemented in that area. And, and we're talking about possibly implementing the East of Hudson regulations yeah. in Hillside Lake. Yes. I mean, that might actually, because you can, you can complain about the water flowing in and all that until you stop it from the source. You have to get at the source. Right, right. Everything right. else is just a band-aid until you get at the source. So just real quick for the board, I'm just going to read the mission statement of the East of Hudson Watershed Corporation, which basically oversees the, uh, the policing of that watershed district. So the mission of the corporation is to reduce the levels of phosphorus and stormwater runoff in the watershed of the New York City water supply system east of the Hudson River in order to protect the quality of the waters therein and thereby to achieve compliance with municipal separate storm 
sewer MS4 height and requirements and the MS4 permits applicable to the municipalities located within New York City east of Hudson watershed. Okay. So basically they've identified a watershed that uh, contributes sediments and runoff to the reservoir system in New York City and there's heightened requirements within that watershed. Uh, one of the main items is the septic law, right? Okay. So just to talk about that for a second, in the east of Hudson watershed, the, the owners of properties that the septic falls within the watershed, um, they are required within every five years to pump and inspect and submit a report to the town uh, of the condition of their septic system. And I'll just briefly mention what's identified in that report. Um, talk about whether it's a septic tank, cesspool, seepage pit, or other, how large that tank is and how much sludge was, sludge was found in it. Is there any evidence of exposed or discharged sewage into the ground surface? Structural integrity of the component, septic tank, cesspool, seepage pit, et cetera, whether it's good, fair, or poor. The type of septic tank, whether it's concrete, steel, plastic, or other. Now, I will say any steel tank that's still in the ground today, I pretty much bet Can't my be last good. dollar that it's rotted, okay? Uh, and they're still out there. Um, is there any wastewater or drain back from the drain field during the pump out? So when they, what they do is when they pump out the tank, if sewer is flowing back in the tank from the leach field, that, that tells them that the leach field's not working properly because it shouldn't drain back into mm -hmm. the tank. So it's important not only to pump but to have somebody qualified inspect the tank because then they can tell you if there's a problem. Maybe that water is leaching somewhere or, or maybe, you know, the homeowner's toilet continues to flush and they're not worried about it, but it doesn't mean that the septic is in good condition and that's why they have to fill out this detailed report, you know, a qualified septic operator and that gets turned in. Uh, and then they go on to say, is there any other observable signs of septic system failure or malfunction? And again, this has to be signed by a, a certified septic caller. So that's something that the East of Hudson has, has initiated. Yeah, and we have that up in, up in Stormville, up on the in mountain. That Stormville area yep. for I don't know how many homes, but it's a large number of homes that, yep. that have yep. to comply with so that. So they have to comply with our, our what they call it, septic pump out rule. Septic pump out. Yeah, room. yeah. Right. So that's something that we could uh, adopt for the Hillside Lake area. Create a uh, stormwater area. No, I wouldn't call it stormwater. Well, it's uh, a watershed, watershed area. Yeah, watershed. We were area. we were looking at the Hillside Lake. Um, well, we get protective a lot of, watershed area. I think Hillside get a Lake lot of watershed protection. Right, right. We have some, a lot of photos from the storm photos that show. Um, right, because a lot of this flow, I mean, yeah, there's some in pipes, but there's some through ditches. Yeah, yeah That's yeah. the other part to, to, to kind of take it to the next level is that they have retrofits where they have programs that they're going through and uh, if there's any, you know, open swales, exposed soils, they're rip wrapping them. If you drive down 84, if anyone's ever noticed in the median of 84, where it's all grass, you see these stone check dams mm -hmm. and that, that's all part of that. So. That's taken it, you know, to the next level. Now, what we've done, obviously, we're, we're pumping our catch basins. I'm sorry. Those, those stones do what? Lower the help, speed of the help water? Reduce, help trap the sediment so it doesn't flow. Oh, the sediment. Right. Oh. It helps trap the sediment. Right. Helps trap the sediment. Because there's a lot of exposed surfaces at Hillside Lake. And, you know, there's gravel driveways. There's yards. I mean, uh, we've got photos of really it's just a lot of instances where water running off any yard, any gravel driveway alongside the road. So, it, so, I mean, the pavement's not generating the sediment, aside from maybe in the winter when you have sand. Obviously, if you got sand on a road, it rains, you're moving the sand. But the rest of the time after the roads are swept, all this muddy water, the brown water, it's coming from somewhere. The road is not generating it. Right. You know, it's coming off lawns. It's coming from maybe areas that don't have <coughs> lawns. It's coming from dirt on the side of the road, any, any number of places. And it's a hard to get it all in one shot, you got to, you know, chip away at it. Right, right, but, right. But, but you have that, you have the septic, you have all these components. Mm -hmm. But again, if you don't go after the source, right, you know, because even if we go in there and we dredge, which we filed the application to try to move some sediment, if you don't go after the source, you're just going to be back it's there. It's going to happen again. You know, pulling again. Yeah. We do have some s deep sumps, which work on the, sl the uh, smaller rainfall events. Yeah. But in a larger event, when you really have a high velocity of water, the, the, the water, the sediment just doesn't have time to settle out in those mm -hmm. spaces. So, I mean, that's something I think the board should consider. Yeah. Again, we've, we've already progressively uh, starting to pump the, or clean the catch basins yearly uh, versus the once every five years. So, so we're doing that. Uh, another thing we could consider is that when people take out permits to do work on their house, uh, some other towns have done this in the watershed, 
that if you're going to disturb more than 2,000 square feet, you have to have an erosion control plan mm -hmm. before you get your permit. So you have to have track and entrance. You got to have silt fence. You know all these protective measures to control the sediment. Um, so I mean, I think that's something the board should consider because yeah. again, if we don't do something about the source, right? You know, we're just chasing the problem downstream. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a good point. I think uh, the fact that we already do this up in the Stormville area, we already yeah, have. Yeah, I mean, there's basically a model in place. Yeah. We have a know. system in place. Yeah. I mean, so we would create a, a, a watershed area in the Hillside Lake area, right. and then we would adopt these laws, and right. then you'd have a septic inspection rules and right. things. Right, right. I would suggest within two years, yeah. the initial two years, everyone's septic has to be inspected within the first two years. Okay. After that, it would be every five years. Every five years. Okay. Now, so when we did that, who was, can all septic men base, most of the septic right. men in our area do those? Do we have a list of qualified septic I mean, operators? APH, Herring, and, you know, all our I'll locals. have to check the file. I didn't get involved directly with the list, but I can get you an answer to that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We I mean, you have to be a certified waste hauler. Yeah. You know, at that point, anybody Basically just can't. Basically, anybody with the real truck. So at that point, if you've got the license, uh, uh, say you're I think you know, we that a guy qualified to inspect, so. Well, that's something that we should definitely consider because, well, yeah. that's what the, that's what the city did. Yeah, you know, yeah. they they were trying to deal with it at the end, and they realized you got to deal with it at the at source. source. Yeah, so that'd be the same. And it's same exactly it. Phosphorus, which is the contaminant at Hillside Lake, is yeah. phosphorus. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I mean, something we should definitely consider. Something we're already doing in another part of town, and it wouldn't be too difficult to expand that program to Hillside Lake, mm -hmm. and I think that would help a lot with. Uh, a lot of these issues. And we've talked about going in and dredging out the material that we were supposed to be We filled out our application. We had to go yeah. back and forth to get it right. And yeah. uh, we've submitted that. You signed off on that, I think, yeah. just the other day. And that's with the DEC. So hopefully we'll be How in many there. tons is that? Uh, I think the number was 120,000 pounds, which equates to 60 tons. I think we submitted 100 tons. OK. Just to be safe. And looking at access yeah. points and yeah. things of that yeah. nature. So. Hopefully get that done soon. We hope to have that back within two months from DC. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. All right, so that's where we are. Again, we have six months to come up with a plan. Um, a couple different options uh, in regards to the, uh, the storm water going into the lake. I think that we, we might have a plan to address that, to clean that up. And that'll be a, a multi-year project. But I think once you start inspecting the these septics, you start having uh, the swales riprap lined and stuff like that, paving, uh, I don't know. What do they like do? There's another thing. I guess there's a, there's a wet area. I'm sorry to interrupt, but there's a wet area. And uh, we found four-wheelers in there, four-wheeling in this, in this swamp area. Okay. And that's great. They're having a good old time, but all they're doing is stirring up the it's mud and then mud. it rains. And then that, what do you get? So yeah. Yeah. how do you, how do we try to, yeah. you know? people have to realize that's a good point all right well something we'll have to consider as far as resolving these issues with the sediment going into the lake so all right well that's it for the discussion um, and we'll have to put together some of these options for the dissolution plan and circulate them to the board and get your thoughts on it okay all righty that being said open uh, discussion anything anybody like to discuss an open discussion I, um, I wanted to bring something to the table to discuss tonight. Mm -hmm. I, um, I know that we had a back and forth uh, discussion with the community at a couple of different meetings. Uh, I had introduced at one time the idea of proposing and putting on a ballot for the general election term limits for elected official and uh, I had to propose three terms for town board, and I believe it was six terms for town supervisor. I just feel that uh, that's something that could be useful so that other people in the community who want to serve could enter the political, um, the political phase in their life and serve the community that they live in. I, just open it for the discussion tonight and hear what some of the other board members or the rest of the board feels about the issue. I think nothing's preventing them from running if they want to. There's a process. 
put forth by the town, by the state, rules that we all have to abide by. And uh, you, you go for it. You go and you, you run. If you lose, you lose. If you win, you win. And I think um, I trust the people of East Fishkill to make a decision rather than have a third party come and say, okay, you're done. I think the people here, there's been great turnaround on this board over the years. And I think that um, in a small community such as ours, you know, it's, it's one thing with, with the president and some have even argued, I mean, you, you Google term limits and you'll see on Senate always comes up and Congress, the career politicians. Well, those people hide in Albany, they hide in Washington, D.C. Here, you can find us on the soccer field, in the supermarket, they can all come to town hall. I give my personal cell phone. <laughs> so it's, it's really easy for the people to make a decision based on we are always around in our community. So I don't personally, my personal opinion, I think it's taking the voice away from the people. I think the people in East Fishkill are smart enough to make a choice on who they think should lead them. Well, it's kind of ironic that two first-term councilmen are discussing term limits because just the fact you're both first-term uh, councilmen shows turnover. I mean, Nick, you're two-term. Yep. I don't know how many terms I am. Uh, I don't know, six terms, I guess. Peter, you're the longest one here. But I, it, how six. Many term? Hmm? six terms. Six terms. On my six terms. Yep. Your six terms are longer than my six terms. But again, I think it shows Yours a lot. Yours feel longer, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> but it shows a lot of turnover, and I, I agree with, with Councilman uh, Franco on that one. It shows a lot of turnover on the, on the local level, I know. Um, any other thoughts, anybody? I don't, I don't think it serves any purpose on the local level. I, I do agree that maybe sometimes, as you say, up in, the, up in Washington, in the Senate or Congress, or maybe some, but even at that, I have a problem with this because, you know, the thing is that the right to vote is the cornerstone of democracy. So if you just arbitrarily say, well, you can't vote for somebody because they've been in that much, I, I think that's a disservice to democracy. You know, I, I think it's, it's wrong pretty much. It, it was put in the Articles of Confederation. I think it was two or three year, three year terms I think they wanted them to have. But then yeah. when it came to the actual Constitution, the, uh, the founding fathers were silent on it. And what they said was, all right, Congress, you're going to come back every two years. Leave it to the voters. And come back to the people yeah. and let the people decide. Uh -huh. Now, have people been there too long? I think career politicians are crazy. I, I think they're in there way too long. But the people have to decide. Yeah. The people. They're the ones. What did Ben Franklin say? Um, uh, what they, those that would give up freedoms in the name of security deserve neither freedom nor security. You know, you don't give up your freedoms like that. I, I think that's wrong. So, anyway, anybody else want to chime in? Any thoughts? Any any further? Well, again, uh, to, just to respond to Councilman Franco, uh, I agree that anybody could decide to run for politics and get the votes. I, I, like I stressed before, there is a system in place by the one party system in the town of East Fishkill with a caucus system that deters people from entering that political arena. Uh, many times you hear comments from local citizens saying, how come the same people are voted in year after year? many times unopposed. What is the answer to that? Sometimes one would think they were doing a good job and they have the popular support. Um, and I know you, this is your first term, so you probably haven't been around, I've been around quite a bit. I do remember some, some upsets at the caucuses, um, but actually that's, that's, that's more of a question for the political party than for the legal body. But absolutely, but I think it's uh, the system. And the, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party in the town of East Fishkill have always had caucuses, and it's just been the way they've so always done So do half the it. towns in um, Dutchess County. Do they really? No kidding, yeah. And I think it's just a choice, you know, petitions or caucuses, we've always used caucuses. And, and uh, you know, to answer the question about the voting rights, I mean, nobody's taking any votes away from anybody. Well, sure or you any are. rights to vote mm -hmm. for a candidate. 
the only dilemma becomes the candidate that you get to choose. Uh, many times it's either that candidate or nobody else. So, uh, I mean, unless there is a system in place, uh, it seems like I have suggested to the Republican Party to change from a caucus to a primary and give people the right and give the people a fair chance to run for, for politics. Uh, if you have a party system that controls the type of candidates or who could be on a ballot, that to me is taking somebody's rights away from choosing from other candidates. And I know that that's a way of doing things, but uh, I have my doubts if 42 people in a room decide for 30,000 people in a community, and many times they go back and forth, uh, that is the dilemma. So if, if a mistake is made, how do you rectify that mistake? On election day? At the ballot box, absolutely. Well, and if you have one person running for town supervisor, who's the other person you vote for? Oh, I've had challenges. Uh, that's just yeah. mentioning. No, no, I'm go I understand that, Councilman. But, but so who else would you vote for? Whoever's on the ballot. Yeah. If there's nobody on the ballot, how is that? That's the one issue. Party. party. But the issue, the, but Councilman, you're confusing the political party issue with the term limit issue that you brought up. The, right. po the political party issue with the caucus has to do with that, the political parties. We have no say us here to decide what will it be a caucus system or a petition to primary system either way either system anybody can put their name forward there's been shown even at the last presidential primary that we had it was a record high and there was only a hundred and some odd people who voted in that primary we've had hundreds of people at a caucus so yeah just like a primary a caucus you can get a lot of people or a little people just like you said but it's not refraining anybody from coming number one number two that's not our decision to make that's a political party if the if the political party of the democratic party and the republican party want to change the petition to primary then that's what we do but here, we don't decide that. So it's futile to even discuss that. If you want to discuss the term limits, of course, that's, that's your right and that's what we're doing. But I agree that the term limits, we have term limits, they're called elections. Um, we don't even know how the term limits would work out because we don't even have it for federal or state officials, which like the councilman said, those are the people who get the big donations and everything else to stay in power. I, I don't receive any donations. I, f I fund my own campaign, I'm sure so do you. And you know, what do we do? We, we go knock on doors and we see the people in our town. We go to the ball games, we go to soccer games and we talk to them. If they wanna see us, they come down to your restaurant, mine, they, go, they knock over here on the town hall, they come in and see us. We're very accessible. They see us in the supermarkets. We are not hiding in, uh, down to Washington for six months of the year or up to Albany. We're here, we're, we're the representatives. Whether they are Democratic, Republican, conservative, independent, we're here to represent them all. And if they wanna talk to us about an issue, they're gonna call us. And I'm sure they do you and they, and they sure do me. So I, I don't know um, if we're leaving anybody out. I sure don't, so that's, that's my opinion. Good point, good point. <clears throat> okay, anything else on the subject before we move on? Councilman Franco, I know that you had uh, uh, something you wanted to bring up about recreation. Oh yes, are we doing the rec reports or are no, the- we're not uh, doing reports we're not per se, reports. it's open discussion. Okay. I know you did- All right, yes, 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 I have a few that, things that's, I would like to say then. That's time sensitive, so- the Yes, yes, the, um, the East Fishkill Baseball Association um, put forth to the Rec Advisory Board they want to do some work on field five. They want to make it a dual use field. Um, they would like to convert field five next to the library. Uh, the current dimensions on field five are 46 feet, uh, 46 foot pitching mound and 60 foot base paths. They want to convert that, uh, what they call extending the skin. They would move the base paths to 70 feet and the pitching mound to 50 feet. Uh, would allow the league to do the following on that field, schedule additional games for 11 and 12 U teams during the spring. 
Uh, field four is the only one with the 70 foot base paths and the 50 foot mound, which is portable. They could host more district and state tournaments and alleviate congestion on field four, which is where men's softball is. Um, I'm very much in agreement with this. The Rec Advisory Board approved it as well. The library. I talked to the library. Uh, we've had discussions. Um, the only thing that they would be doing would be increasing the size of the outfield screen. They're going to buy a new screen and increase the screen. Okay. This way, prevent any balls from okay. So the changes over. are happening inside the outer circumference yes. is not changing, correct? Yep. The outside is fine. I talked to the library. They're all on board. Okay. And they were very grateful that uh, baseball and the town reached out to them. Okay. The total would be $7,800 to do this, and baseball has agreed to do all the work. Okay. So the Rec Advisory Board said yes, and I know this is time sensitive. I know we can't vote on it tonight, but right. if we can agree that. Um, yeah, and it's coming out of Rec Development. It would come funds. out of Rec Development because it's a capital improvement. Okay, on the and the field. Rec Board has dis discussed this, and they're in favor. Yes, of it. and the baseball will be having a tournament, a two-day tournament in early July, and then the big state tournament in the middle of July. Okay. And it was very successful last year. So. Okay. And I think why we say it's time sensitive. Uh, so uh, well, they have to get working. Have to get working. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know if the board would entertain moving forward with this, knowing we'll vote on it at the next board meeting. Um, this is a second rec project that's come for us that is time sensitive, but I guess it's just the season. It's just the way it is. Um, but seventy-eight hundred dollars would come out of rec development. Yes. And baseball would be doing all the work. Baseball agreed to do all the work. Okay, libraries. Library is fine. One thing I've been pushing with the leagues is sort of this agreement where we have either um, we'll put forth some money, mm -hmm. they'll do the work, or they'll put forth the money, and then we'll do the work. Okay. So it's been working out very well. We've been able to get a lot done. Okay. All right. Um, if we were to move forward with this, what we would have to do is we'll vote on it at the next meeting. And I think the, re the question is, would this board be comfortable moving forward with the project, I guess, because you have to order the materials? Yeah, they would have to get all of this stuff and begin work probably within a week or two. Okay. So if the, would the board be comfortable with moving forward on this? I think that's the question. So Fine by me. Okay. Councilman Marinero? Would you okay, okay by me. This? Just, Peter, any idea how much is left in rec development? Uh, 700 something thousand, I yeah, believe. Yeah, 767 or something like that. And there's more money starting to come back in now with some of these developments too, isn't there? We have seen some deposits. Yeah. From, yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. I think Tom. Thank we're, you. We're all in favor of supporting this project. So. Okay. Anything else? I want to talk a little bit about. Um, you want to talk about the day, all inclusive day? Go ahead. Um, all inclusive day, Red Wing Day at the beach, July 29th. Again, um, we just signed off. I signed off on the picnic tables yesterday with the Eagle Scout project. Um, uh, Boy Scout uh, Brandon Bernard. Um, <clears throat> we've raised close to three thousand dollars so far for the um, for the event. I'd like to thank Royal Carding for their donation of a sand wheelchair to Red Wing. Really? Yes. Yeah, what yeah. A sand wheelchair. A sand yeah. wheelchair. Really? Yes. It was a very very big gift. A very, nice very donation. Nice very nice donation. Yeah. Um, we are working with um, the highway superintendent about paving walkways and the highway superintendent had a good point that the asphalt would be too hot mm -hmm. so we're going to look more into a boardwalk type of uh, accessibility in that area um, the one issue we're running into is um, being able to purchase a dock or even have one built for one to be ada compliant it's looking to be a little bit too expensive and again this is time sensitive so we have discussed that we're going to try to do as best we can to make this the first all-inclusive park and if we can't get everything that we want right now, we'll just have to wait a few Next years or whatever and, and try to get to get that down the road. It was a little too far. It was a little too far and it was also a little too expensive. Right, the highway right. superintendent had a good idea. He cleared out a, a beautiful area that was never utilized, which now is gonna be utilized. But uh, he said that would have been perfect for where the fishing, the new fishing dock was, but then I guess the rec people said that their fishing is a little shallow there, no. that it's not good fishing. So, And I just want to thank Jan McHugh for all her hard work doing this. Uh, March Horton and Randy Ross, they've been teaming up and getting a lot of donations. So our county legislators coming through as always. Very good. Yep, and uh, Billy McClellan and Bill Green for their continued cooperation. Very good. So thank you. 
Thank you. That's a very cool project. Also, I've got to tell you, the hometown hero banners look really neat. Oh, yeah. Thank you to our they highway look, superintendent again for putting really that in there. They look very wonderful. Nice. Huh? Me? Bill McClellan, our um, highway superintendent. And um, so b people who have been giving those donations so they know, uh, some people were confused as to how come their banner hasn't been put up yet. Well, you know, we wanted for Memorial Day to put, to memorialize the ones who have passed. So now going forward, we're going to put up all the rest of them so forward you'll, you'll to really pop it up Veterans forward. Day, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, while I'm at it, um, Councilman Franco and I on Tuesday night attended uh, Gayhead School. There was an award ceremony for the Girl Scouts, a uh, yearly award ceremony. It was very nice. Um, a uh, bunch of different girls from the Girl Scout troops, and um, com they, most of them made community projects, which we, um, we recognize them for, and a bunch of them who are seniors are going off to college now. They uh, went over the Girl Scout bridge to become adult oh. Girl Scouts. And it was a great ceremony. They had ice cream, which chocolate, I love. Chocolate ice and cream. We had vanilla ice cream. That's the only reason you went. Vanilla ice cream, well, one of the reasons. But uh, it was really nice. Uh, uh, another um, thing I wanted to discuss was uh, the planning board is getting a lot of applications now recently for a lot of uh, solar farms or solar arrays. Mm -hmm. So uh, possibly uh, we're going to have to discuss as a board on legalities yeah. on moving Aging forward. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's a good point. You're seeing these, for some reason, these solar arrays are popping up all over the place. So, uh, yep, so I'll have to take a look at that. I'll make a mention to the planner. Right. See what we can do. All righty. Peter, any comments, anything to discuss? Uh, just a quick little report on the police department. Uh, New York State Criminal Justice Services grant has been finalized. The police department's buying some $10,500 worth of ballistic helmets and safety equipment. And they participated in a number of traffic safety initiatives on a two-week period with two DWIs and 80 traffic tickets for seat belt and cell phone violations. The patrols were paid by Dutch, paid for by Dutchess County Stop DWI and traffic safety grants. And the Memorial Day weekend, everybody would be happy to know, the police department was out with lots of different things, Sons of Italy, Carnival, soccer, Stormville flea market with no major problems. Wow, good very good. Very good. You know, we're looking to the shared services thing. Uh, Governor Cuomo has mandated that all towns uh, under the leadership of the county executive share services. And one of the things we are looking to do, what I'm finding out the chief has told me, was um, there's different software systems that, that all the different municipalities are using. And I guess uh, Dutchess County actually has a new system, and I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. But uh, the town of Poughkeepsie is, is going to sign on to it, and I think the city of Poughkeepsie is signing on to it. And that is one of the things we might integrate where the city of Beacon, town of East Fishkill, also would be using the same software system. So I think it's really good for uh, sharing information between the, the different uh, police departments. So it's really a pretty neat project. So we'll see how that goes. We'll be meeting on that again next week. So that'll be good. So. All right, if that's it, um, that's about all we have to discuss tonight. Closing the work session, the next town board meeting is June 22nd, 2017. How about uh, my report, John? Oh. oh, we didn't do reports. We did open discussion. I thought you did Can your I open have discussion. A discussion. Oh, I thought that? you did your open discussion already. We went around for open discussion. Oh, sure. oh, oh, oh. I just wanted to say a few things about the ELCLA community. Um, I believe uh, we received an email from our constituents regarding uh, the grass. Uh, it's actually on the shoulders of the, right. And she was saying if uh, anytime soon, this is gonna be taken care of, right? May I speak? Go ahead. That was Ms. Sumi. I um, sent her back an email today. The contract will be in the lake on Monday. Okay. So Sumi, next week probably, Monday. we'll take care of that. And um, I just want to say a few words regarding what transpired on the May 25th town hall meeting. Uh, basically, when the town supervisor put the grant on hold until when we don't know, 
But uh, I have a question for the board. I mean, I asked that question on that night. Did any of the board members know that this was happening before that night? I didn't know. I don't recall. But I think it's ironic you were actually in when you picked up your packet the week before and you were sitting there in my secretary's office and you said to me, what's going on with the grants? And I said, well, to be honest with you, you know, the other grant, I said well, we had to send them a letter. And I said, this grant, we really don't know. We have to notify them of the, of the vote. But um, I told you a week before. And then when you picked up your packet, I know you said you were very interested in the project, but we didn't have the award of the, the bids on there and you didn't seem to ask about it. So I thought that you were satisfied with that. Well, I, I, right I now mean, you're I, giving me. And I didn't, put the, I didn't put it on hold. I had to notify the, the agency that this has happened. Okay, uh, so tonight you're giving me a little different version than what you said on the May 25th meeting. No, I thought about it after the meeting and I said, wait a minute, you were just in the office the week before when you picked up your packet. Okay, but we didn't discuss holding back the grant, but what I'm saying is mm -hmm. that uh, the board was not notified, so um, the fact that Mr. Hickman acted alone in this decision process is very scary, but it's not surprising. I'm just was, reading a lot of paragraph that I put together. Okay, read your paragraph. In the past, I have opposed the town board granting more power to the town supervisor because of these rude awakenings. The founding father created a balance of power at all levels of government, including the town level. This is to make sure that the people could be served without any abuse of power by any one individual. And yet this is exactly what happened here. Abuse of power by one individual, a town supervisor. Uh, now, I have a letter, I have an email in my possession, and I'm sure, I don't know if the other board members have it. It's dated Wednesday, May 24, 2017. The email was put out at 12.07, 1207 in, in, the, in the afternoon. This came from Mr. Gruber, who was the engineer that su was supposed to supervise the project. And so he wrote, I can't understand on what, on what goes with the community and the town. We were brought in as experts with technologies that, that could really improve the water quality in the lake. The state of New York agreed, approved the plans, and awarded a substantial grant, grant to do this. We have spent months designing, revising, improving, and preparing. I cannot tell you how disappointed we are that after all this time and so much effort, we were finally ready to begin construction and by now, everything is on hold indefinitely. The bid was set to be awarded to a construction contractor tomorrow, mm -hmm. and work would, be, would have begun in June. This has, this has been postponed. The town doesn't know who will own the property and what the future responsibility for the installation will be, so they cannot. And New York State will not allow the project to proceed until this is resolved. If this is not resolved very soon, the window of opportunity will pass. That's where we are, Stephen. So this was at 12 o'clock, and my question is that the board was not notified of this taking place. Okay. Uh, so we came to a meeting that night on May 25th, and there was an exchange between the town supervisor okay. and What day was that, May 24th? This was on... May 24, 2017. Okay. okay, May 25th, we came to a meeting. Right, yep. and that's when most of us found out about the grant being pulled by the town supervisor. No, 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 sir, you keep putting words in my mouth. I notified DEC that there was a change in the status of the Hillside Lake. Until the dissolution is completed and we know who owns the property, I just notified them. We cannot move forward with the grant until the dissolution is Completed. So, now so let me we just, if paid, you just so let me finish. Paid, so we have paid Mr. Gruber some money for this project. Yes. How much do we pay him? Oh, probably $100,000 over okay. the years. Who's accountable for that money, John? Well, excuse me, Councilman. 
Um, let me just say this, whenever we move forward with a project, we've been funding this project ourselves for the taxpayers of the town of East Fishkill. Why would I want to do that? Because it's a stormwater project. It's a stormwater project to filter the stormwater that runs off the road. Now, I will tell you, Mr. Gruber, yes, was very upset, as was I. We were moving along very well, as I explained to you before when you said we never had a plan for Hillside Lake. Well, we did have a plan for Hillside Lake. We're going to install a stormwater filter at, around the beach area that would take the stormwater from the road system and filter it. In addition, we're going to put aerators, a suction hose to recirculate and filter the water in the lake itself. That was the plan. We've worked on this for a long time with Mr. Gruber. Yes, and we paid out of the town, but because this is town stormwater from the highway system. Um, Mr. Gruber, obviously, when I notified him that the vote had taken place and that I had to, as per contract of DEC, notify DEC that we had to put the project on hold indefinitely. DEC was kind enough to tell me that they would have no problem extending the contract um, Term, so we wouldn't have to wait to see if there was going to be, a, if we would just lose it through the deadline. I was very, uh, let me just put this, and uh, unfortunately you don't understand how hard we've worked on this project to get to uh, that you point. You said I don't understand? No, I don't think you understand how hard we worked on this project to get it to that point. In three years I've been working with these people on this project. And how many years have I, have I been working with Mr. Gruber and doing the engineering and working in-house? Okay, so I've okay. been there in some Do you understand that? No, you I've don't. Been there in some I don't of the think meetings. you do. So anyway, we were both very discouraged that this happened. I notified DC. I did not pull the grant, but I do have a responsibility as per the contract to notify the DC to any significant changes in the situation, which I did. We will have to see what happens with the dissolution plan before we see where the project goes. So the project is on hold, not by me, by the DC contract because we have to be able to prove that we have certain rights with the property. Okay? okay but and now you now back to the other thing. I have never been granted extra powers. The powers of the supervisor are those powers that are granted to me by the laws of the state of New York. This board has never granted me extra powers as you seem to read in your paragraph. Um, I understand you have don't really understand, I, I, I recognize that you don't really understand the amount of work that goes through my office. And the fact that I emailed Stephen Gruber the day before the town board meeting, and I mentioned to you the week before that, that there was a problem with the grant when you asked. So I do take offense, understanding that Did you don't- Did not mention that, John, so don't, don't say you that. You sat in, in my that. secretary's office and you said to me, how is the grants? And I explained I it to you. No, yes, I you did. did. I have it no, written I down. Not. I said, Councilman, when is the work going to start? No. I, and that's got you nothing to do. You sat in that chair and you said, how are we with the grants? Well, I, you and, I, say, and I said to you, Councilman, I said, well, this Why are you recanting your story tonight? Why didn't you say it on the 25th? Because the I didn't remember this until after I thought about it, Councilman. I went Pardon? home and I said to myself, you know, he was just in the office week before picking up the packet. And if you will remember, you said to me, how's the grants? And I said, Councilman, I said, Manny, I'm very concerned with the grants. You know what happened with the other one. They requested the letter. And don't shake your head no to me. And I said to you, and now we have this problem with the DEC grant. And I said to you, Councilman, why on earth did they do the petition now and they didn't no wait a state, year? No and I said that to you. No conversation like that took place. Oh, you're, yes, it did. I, I will disagree with you. And I said to you, why would they do the petition now and dissolve it when we're going to do the I, project? I wonder why the story you're saying is like this tonight and you couldn't say the same story last well, you know, when you come up with something like this, Councilman, it takes me a little while to recollect. I didn't and come I up. remember. I, did, I was shocked. It was brought up that I night. I was shocked. It was, brought, the, the, it was brought up that night. News. I just asked the board before if they knew. No. Nobody knew. And, and I'm that's not the very only possible. One, do you think that if I had known, I would have I told you a week before it? that there was problems that we had to notify. You didn't notify anybody. You took it upon yourself. I, it's a contractual alone, obligation. The acted, contract says DC has to be notified. And acted alone to punish the vote that resulted from I the I am not punishing anybody. Okay, that is exactly what happened. When I, oh, refer about, when I refer about certain powers given to the town supervisor, is that from town to town, we have resolutions. They inch up your power, okay? And I have said many times is that I don't want you to have more power than you have. And this is one of the reasons why. 
This is you have an obligation to this board. To absolutely. And I have this an obligation big, to the town of East Fishville. This is a big project that was going on in a community. And we worked very hard on it, Councilman, very hard. And if you had any idea how hard you worked on it, you would understand. Why are you raising your voice? Because, you, you know, Councilman, you upset me with the allegations you were providing tonight. You seem tonight. to be upset anybody, anytime that somebody no, comes with No, 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 no. And doesn't get along with you. Oh, you would always you smile stop? when somebody supports you. Would you ideas. stop? You're being... Anyway, if you'd like to, re you just don't understand. And I said I'm disappointed. Well, you said three times that I don't understand. Yeah, you I don't. understand very well. I, I, I understand very well mm -hmm. that you didn't notify the board. No, There's I didn't. There's body over here that is responsible for making decisions for the taxpayers of this town. Absolutely. Just like you are. Absolutely. Yeah. I could. So you were, you acted alone and mm -hmm. you acted improperly. Okay. The decision is not just yours and yours alone. Uh, I would disagree. To drop a dime I, to the state and no, say no, that no, we no, no. I'm sorry. You want me to? It's a contract. It's in the contract that I signed on behalf. Have of you ever given a copy of this contract? I have a copy of the contract. Do, Anybody do, can come and take a look at it. All you have to do, if you're really interested, is come and ask me. Now, I would just but like to say. If you're going to take an action, if you are going to take an action. I was authorized by this. I was authorized notify. by this town board to sign that contract. I signed that contract. There is provision in that contract that there is, if there is a significant change, they are to be notified within three days. I was obligated to do that. My signature is on that contract, and I was authorized by this board. Now I understand that a lot of things I have to do on a day-to-day -day basis, and this happens. That, uh, that the vote happened, I had three days to notify the DEC. I notified the DEC. Did I tell the town board? No, it wasn't, didn't come to my mind, because we're, was it that me, important to tell the Because we were board very time? busy doing a lot of things, no, Councilor. You're busy. No, 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 no. You you don't because you really don't really know I what we do. I don't understand. You no, you don't know what times. we do in yeah, our that's office. The fourth time. Go ahead. But I think I have the faith of the rest of the board that I act in the best interest. I know I don't have your faith or your trust, and, and that's fine, that's your prerogative, but I think I have the faith and the trust of the rest of the board to act in the best interest. Now, that was a contractual obligation to notify the DEC. I'm not sure I really needed to ask anybody for permission. It was in the contract. But at least share information with the board. Well, I've, you know, Mr. Delisandre, no you said that I, I, we yes. are contacted by the community. Yeah. Okay, I have been contacted. And you could and have been asked, asked me. When is the work is going to start? And I said we're going to start the first week of June. Yeah. Well, it was I the 21st. It was the 21st. Until the 25th when we found out yeah. that nothing else is going to happen as of right now. As of right now. Okay? Yeah. So my question is those on this board need to know these people live in the community and they ask questions all the time. At one time or another. Understood. I, I, I spoke with DC over the three day period, and the last time with DC, I spoke Whatever with. Whatever the reasons Excuse me, excuse job. me, let me finish. I spoke with DC of, of, over, those th over those period, and the last time I spoke with DC was the day before, and when I contacted Mr. Gruber. Yes, I did not think to contact each board member. I will admit to that. It was a contractual obligation to notify DEC. And that's what I did. I did not pull the grant, but DEC had to be notified of the status. I just read the statement from mm -hmm. Mr. Gruber saying that the timely change, the timely manner, if we, do, if we don't use this money, somebody else will get the money, okay? Oh, I can't speak for Mr. Gruber. He deals with the pro these projects all the time. He deals with We're the ones that the made the grant application. I we made, the, gra we the, made the grant application. I might not understand the way you do things, but Mr. Gruber is probably an expert in dealing with these grants and this type of work, I would say. No. We uh, did the grant application. If you would recall his... But now you're saying... Mr. But now Mr. You're saying Cornelius... That lose, but now you're saying that if we lose the grant, we might use taxpayers' dollars to fix, to remediate. Is that what you just said before? I said that we use taxpayers' money to, to develop a plan, which is a stormwater filtration plan, to, to filter the stormwater running off our highway there. That's what I said. And then it'll be reimbursed out of the grant money. Exactly. The same as those water plants, the sewer plant, it all gets reimbursed. Yep. Mark, don't let you keep nothing. Okay. <laughs> How are you going to, if we don't get this money, so you're saying that you want to you wanna invest we've, right now. We've Peter. studied for 27 grants over the years for Hillside Lake. And when we don't get one, you know where that money comes out of? The general, general fund. Yes. So are you telling me 
that we shouldn't apply for grants anymore and take a risk of trying to win that, money. Peter, well, Peter, I didn't no, say no, 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 no. You're saying you don't want to these Peter, I didn't You're say saying the taxpayer's going to lose the money. The council supervisor rejected a grant or put it on hold right now. I did not put it on hold. DEC put it on hold, Councilman. Stop putting words in my mouth. Please. Well, you have you, a contract. You called, you called DEC and notified Con the them. The contract required that I call DEC on and notify them. It was in the contract. But if it's in the contract, he has Did to What am I supposed to do? No, but we approved him to sign the right. contract. I didn't see the contract. But so. we approved it. You can take it. a look at the contract. We, stop in tomorrow. When for it, we approved on, at the town board meeting. Don't right. you? Right. right. Okay. If you want to see the contract, tell him you want to see the okay. contract. It's easy. But the other question that I asked before, yeah. we, Gruber took $100,000. Over the years, we paid him that much. Okay. He, he, but we had to give him some money when we approved, I believe it was in November, that we had to approve uh, some kind of disbursement for a grouper in order to continue the application process to DEC. He received some funds, correct? He received. We've been paying him right along. How much do we give him then? I think about around $100,000 okay. over the My years. My question is, mm -hmm. What happened to that money now if this doesn't happen? If that doesn't happen, then we will, be hard, we will not be able to replace it from the grant. It is taxpayers' money. We use taxpayers' money to do engineering. We do tax, you use taxpayers' money to do feasibility studies. We use taxpayers' money. So to that Pe is a, a to waste Peter's of point, taxpayers' dollars. To Peter's point that we use, money, you, we use our money, taxpayers' money, sir, yes, sir, to do things. If they don't pan out, unfortunately, they don't pan out and we can't get reimbursed for them. We hope on the whole they work out, generally they do, but this one, unfortunately, has become problematic. And if, uh, I agree with Peter, if you say we don't want to apply for grants anymore, or you know, that is th the way we can go. Yeah, but to clarify, the grant isn't gone. The grant, no. the DEC, it's just, it's just, the DEC it's on hold. We can, we have up to two years. Absolutely, to and we can get a two year extension. Okay. So it's not done yet. <clears throat> but, you know, whenever you do a project, you have to do a certain amount of engineering and studying. Sometimes the projects come through, sometimes they don't. There is a cost to this. Just as there's a cost to all the hours we put into a lot of these studies. There's a quest to that. We pay people and they work hard at it. We don't try to waste taxpayers' money. We try to make the right decisions. Unfortunately, in this case, the grant has been put on hold. I did not put it on hold. So you're guaranteeing that this money will be there? No, now? I can't guarantee any money. That's uh, exactly money. what I'm saying. I understood. Because the state is going to find if there is another project that needs help, that money is going to be transferred to that other she project. She said we would be good for another two-year extension. But it's not guaranteed. She said she felt very, she there said, are no said. guarantees, no. That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay, Councilman. The use of taxpayer money, I would just like to say we do not take lightly. We do projects and we're very successful at doing projects. Sometimes they don't work out the way that we wish that they would. Um, and right now it hasn't been denied, it has just been postponed. So we, we will see what the future brings. Um, and believe me, I do not take it lightly, the use of taxpayers' money. With that, I'm going to close the workshop unless anybody has anything to say. No, thank you very much for coming tonight.